Hey guys, let's uh, take a second to take a look at uh, naval movement and some naval surface combat here. Uh, so you can see we have a Polish surface action group or SAG here in the uh, northern Baltic along with the Danish SAG and they're facing off against a uh, Russian SAG that's holed up in the Gulf of Finland under an area detection marker he was detected in an earlier turn. Uh, one thing to remember about moving uh, naval units or sea transport or what have you is that you can a naval unit can only enter a one new sea, net sea box or sea zone uh, per movement segment. So they could move from, for instance, the northern Baltic to the southern Baltic, uh, but in that same movement segment they could not continue on and move into the Bornholm Basin. They could, they could go from the southern Baltic to the Bornholm Basin in a subsequent movement segment, uh, but they would have to take uh, basically two movement segments to get there. Uh, for, so for this instance, they're just moving from one sea zone or at sea box to the next one. And that's fine. They've only entered one new one. Anytime a naval unit moves, however, you have to roll for naval detection. So the naval detection charts on the bottom of this strategic display. Uh, I have this folded over uh, for this video, so we're not going to take a look at that, but you can go ahead. Uh, there are die roll modifiers on there for various states and uh, having having units or not having units in the area. For instance, uh, owning owning Tallinn gives you a minus one to detection modifiers in the Gulf of Finland. All kinds of things. So, but you roll not for the stack, but you roll for every individual unit, even though they move together. And so, for our purposes, we're going to go ahead and say that the uh, the poles were point detected. Um, but before we would do that, we actually need to go do a contested movement. So there are a couple of conditions that can cause contested sea movement. You can see the list and the rules. Um, the primary one here, obviously, is that there's a, a Russian enemy SAG in that area, and so that they could contest that movement. Uh, so you look over here, rolling low is good. Um, you notice there's some die roll modifiers here. So for each SAG, CV, CVN, there are no CV, CVNs in this particular uh, example, of course. Uh, but So because those two SAGs are moving together, they uh, support each other, so that's going to be a minus two, offset a little bit by the plus one for the Russian SAG that's already there, so it's a minus one. And then these other modifiers just apply if they apply. Um, one thing to note, the non-allied player could expend a cruise missile point to add an additional plus one. For our example, we'll assume that the uh, naval units passed with flying colors. They entered. The poles were point detected. So if you go back over to our sequence of play, you can see that in step J, both sides may conduct naval surface combat. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Uh, so naval surface combat, you take the strike value that's on these markers, so two one, two for these guys, right? And you cross-reference that on the strike table. So if you can see right there on that bottom row, you have a naval one, a naval two, and a naval three value. Now obviously none of these guys are naval three, they're naval ones and naval twos, but that's the that's the column that those guys will roll on when they strike. Now naval surface combat is simultaneous with one exception. Undetected units always fire before detected units. So if if you're going to have naval surface combat, and and so the other nuance is that either side can declare it regardless of whose combat segment it is. So if the Russian wanted to start the fight, he'd have to ask the Allied player if the Danish SAG was going to fire, because if he is, the Danish SAG was going to fire first, which of course he probably would want to. Uh, but in this case, the Allies are going here for the express purpose of getting rid of this guy. So the Danish SAG decides he's going to fire, he rolls the dais, cross-references it on that chart, puts a strike one marker on the Russian SAG. Now the Russian SAG, once he hits hit once, can immediately opt to uh, retreat uh, to the nearest port, which of course would be in Russia. Uh, but he decides he's going to stay and duke it out, he's already on the losing side. Once that Danish SAG fired, he became automatically point detected. So the Russian now can fire back at either one, but the pole is going to fire at the same time the Russian does. So it doesn't really matter who hits who, say he fires at the Danish SAG, hits, and the poles fire and get a hit on the Russian SAG. Pretty good shooting, but that's how it would end up. The Danes could also retreat back to the nearest friendly port uh, or at sea zone, and the Russians, because they took another strike damage, could also retreat again. There you go, that's naval movement and some naval surface combat. Hope it helps.